To thee we come, O Lord our God. Before thine altar, Father, thou knowest best our yearning hearts. Live supplication and serve. Lift up from participate in this holy sacrifice and now please make an examination of your conscience Having confessed our sins to God and asking for his forgiveness, let us recite the second act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O God, you will again renew us. Show us your mercy, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we might enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Up Jerusalem, stand upon the heights, look to the east, and see your children gathered from the east and the west at the word of the Holy One, rejoicing that they are remembered by God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father. We worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, 
You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Most gracious Father, you gather us from the four corners of the earth through your holy word. Open the closed ears of those who wander, that they may hear your word, which alone brings peace. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. seated. John, if you would come and proclaim the word. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, observe what is right, do what is just, for my salvation is about to come, my justice about to be revealed. The foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, ministering to him, loving the name of the Lord and becoming his servants, all who keep the Sabbath free from profanation and hold to my covenant, them I will bring to my holy mountain and make joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be acceptable on my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. The word of the Lord. The gradual. All the nations of the world shall be converted and shall offer God true worship. letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I am speaking to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle to the Gentiles, I glory in my ministry in order to make my race jealous and thus save some of them. For if their rejection is the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance be but life from the dead? For the gifts and the call of God are irrevocable. Just as you once disobeyed God, but have now received mercy because of their disobedience, so they have now disobeyed in order that by, by virtue of the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God delivered all to disobedience that he might have mercy upon all. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Thank you John. Thank you, John. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Turn to me and be safe, all you ends of the earth, for I am God. There is no other. Alleluia, alleluia. Almighty and eternal God, who cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Word of God, please stand and listen with attention and devotion. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman of that district came and called out, Have pity on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. 
But Jesus did not say a word in answer to her. Jesus' disciples came and asked him, Send her away, for she keeps calling out after us. He said in reply, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But the woman came and did Jesus homage, saying, Lord, help me. He said in reply, it is not right to take the food of the children and throw it to the dogs. She said, please, Lord, for even the dogs eat the scraps that fall from the table of their masters. Then Jesus said to her in reply, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And the woman's daughter was healed from that hour. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, to you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, today's theme is that of unity. For Jesus himself said, a house that is divided against itself cannot stand. In the readings for today, we see the call for unity. And we see chaos and confusion when there is no unity. Every single week I come across a couple of articles that pertain to the church about one group is separating from another group over such and such an issue. Paul is very simple and direct. He says to all, he says, I preach Christ crucified. And so, as we look at today's Gospel, we see Jesus having a conversation with a woman from the region of Tyre and Sidon. As I pointed out in my bulletin, the Tyre, of Sidon, a Tyre and Sidon was not a part of the Jewish territories. It was la rather the land of the Phoenicians, who did not really have a direct covenant as the Jewish people had. But this woman, who was not a part of the Jewish tradition, came to Jesus because she needed help. She said, my daughter has a demon. And she's tormented. We read in today's gospel that Jesus didn't answer or give a reply in the very beginning. And even the apostles said, get rid of her, send her away. But again, we see in the gospel of Jesus Christ, where man in need of help or women came to the Lord and said, help us, help me, help my son, help my daughter, help. Jesus makes a reference to her that is a little unclear in all the character of Lord Jesus. He first says to his apostles, I have come to the lost sheep first, to the house of Israel. And he says 
to this woman, it's not right to take the food of the children and throw it to the dogs. Who was he referring to? The Canaanites. They were called Gentile dogs because of the self-righteousness that was exhibited by the elders in the general consciousness of its people. To call someone a dog in the days of Jesus was an insult. Dogs, for the most part, were scavengers. They were called scavengers of the street. They had no home. They had no foundation. And they just wandered aimlessly. And they many times brought diseases. But she says to the Lord, even the dogs, she's referring to herself, even the dogs eat the scraps that fall from the table of their masters. The conversation that took place, she was acknowledging how the Jewish Orthodox people considered the Canaanites by saying that even the dogs eat the scraps. What were the scraps? What was ever left over? Because if Jesus said that I've come to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, I think he wanted to see what kind of a reaction he was going to get from his apostles. To them, get rid of her. Out of this conversation that Jesus has with this Canaanite woman, he saw something in her. First of all, out of love, she came to ask not for herself, but for her daughter. She had faith in approaching this Jewish rabbi, which was not a part of her tradition. She probably heard of Jesus. And so this encounter brought the two of them together. And in the end, it was the faith of the woman and the power of God that Jesus exhibited. He said to her, let it be done as you wish. And according to the story, we find that the daughter was healed. You know, my brothers and sisters, I found this reading from the Gospel of Matthew when I first read it confusing. Because in the Gospel of John, Jesus says, when I am raised up, I will draw all men unto myself. Not just to the children, the lost sheep of the house of Israel, but to each and every single one of us, irregardless of our background, our ethnicity, or our tradition. I will draw all men unto myself. And so my brothers and sisters, throughout all Christendom, whether it be here in North America, South America, Africa, the seven continents, Jesus comes with not only power and wisdom, but also acceptance. And all he asks of us is that we follow him. When he calls us. You know what the sin that is unforgiven Jesus says, of all the things that a man will do, or a woman, there is only one sin that will not be forgiven. Does anybody know what that sin is? It's 
to sin against the Holy Spirit. There is a, a pooling of ourselves to know the Lord Jesus in our lives. And the sin of, against the Holy Spirit that Jesus says will not be forgiven are those people that have, as he said, they have eyes, but yet they do not see. They have ears, but yet they do not hear. And neither do their hearts comprehend. Reread the readings as prescribed by the church on this, the 20th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Make a stewardship of your own calling and to see whether or not you have sought the Lord in your life every single day through prayer. It's a simple ask and you shall receive. May we, like that Canaanite woman, have the wisdom and the faith and the love to know the Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised now and forevermore. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he arose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Please be seated. Who will not fear you, Lord, or glorify your name? For you alone are holy. All the nations will come and worship before you, for your righteous acts have been revealed.
without end. Amen. Receive this offering, most holy Trinity, which we make in remembrance of the passion, resurrection, and ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ, and in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, that it may add to their honor and aid our salvation. May they then, whose memories we honor on earth, intercede for us in heaven. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted this day by God, our Heavenly Father. Amen. Let us pray, Heavenly Father, accept this sacrifice for the salvation of your people. May it empower the witness of your church. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Unto the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. Through his cross, cross and resurrection, he freed us from sin and death and called us to the glory that has made us a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, and a people set apart. Everywhere we proclaim your mighty works, for you have called all of us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so therefore we join this day with the voices of angels and archangels, with all the saints and the entire church, and we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please be seated. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices, which we offer to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church, that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world, with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and all who profess the true orthodox and Catholic faith which comes to us from the apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord, my brothers and sisters, may we pray for the sick, the suffering, and the dying, the hungry, the homeless, the unemployed. May we offer prayers for all abused and neglected children in our world, as well as all abused and neglected animals and all victims of violence, both here and abroad. May we all pray for peace in our world, that the leaders of our world would rather seek peace than war. May we be grateful for all those who serve in our armed forces, both here and abroad, and pray for their well-being. May we also, dear Father, pray for all here present whose faith and devotion are known to you, for whom we offer or who offer up to you, the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own, for the hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God. We join in communion with and honor, above all others, the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ. Also, your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who lived, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 
We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering of that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people. Through Christ our Lord, amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering and make it pleasing unto yourself, so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before suffering and death, in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful, and save them, he instituted these holy mysteries and which spiritually and bodily in his entire being, he again lives among his people. At that small moment so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven to you, God, his almighty Father, and giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, and his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which your high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice of the immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your highest altar, into the presence of your divine majesty, that we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and who now sleep in peace. To these souls, Lord, and all who rest in Christ, grant, we pray, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master, merited eternal joy. Numbers of their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ our Lord, amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity with the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever, Instructed by our Savior's teaching, 
uh, and following the divine example, we say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. secure from all disturbance through the same Jesus Christ your son and our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit forever and ever Amen. may the peace of the Lord be with you always May this commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us who receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free us from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful in your teaching, and never let us be parted from you, who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for our judgment or condemnation, though we are unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become our safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master, awaken in us living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant us who lives and reigns with God the Father in unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. We will take the bread of heaven, and we will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord? For all the graces he hath rendered unto me, I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. I shall call upon the name of the Lord, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, receive the body and blood of Christ. I say to you, many will come from the east and west and will recline with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob at the banquet in the kingdom of heaven. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, your gospel reaches to the ends of the earth and those who receive it are gathered into your kingdom for us who have shared your table and have been grafted
to your holy vine. May it always be good news indeed. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit and our one God forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Go, the sacrifices are offered. Thanks be to God. May the tribute of our worship be pleasing to you, most holy Trinity, and grant that the sacrifice which we, the unworthy, have offered up into the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you. Through your mercy, may it become effective for ourselves and all those for whom we have offered it, through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. In the beginning was the the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made, but and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in Him found a life, a life of the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness of darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness to testify to the light so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light, the real light which gives light. To every man who was coming into the world, he was in the world, and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name who are begotten not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God, the Word, became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you. 